Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, home automation and the smart home are, of course, popular topics today, and there are many, many commercial solutions. But you can also roll your own. In this video, what I want to talk about is how you can monitor the temperature in your home and have that information sent over to your smartphone even when you are away from your house. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, before we dive into the detail, just let me remind you, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, let's crack on. Okay, so what we're trying to achieve is that somewhere at home I have a microcontroller with some kind of temperature sensor on it, and I want to get that data on my phone, and I want that data to be available when I'm in the house and when I'm outside the house, away in another place, so I can see the temperature and the humidity back at home, even if I'm not physically there. So that's the goal, to have information on my smartphone telling me about the temperature and the humidity uh, in my house. Now to achieve that, we're gonna have a network enabled microcontroller. That means the one that's got Wi-Fi basically. We're gonna to need to add a temperature sensor if the board you're using doesn't already have a temperature sensor on it. And we're gonna use uh, Arduino for programming it because that is one of the most popular ways. And it means we can use a variety of boards, whichever one you want to use, that's what you can use for this setup. And the other end, we want the data to come in on a smartphone. It doesn't matter whether it is Android or iOS. Now the glue to this whole thing, how do we get this thing here to talk to this thing here is MQTT that sits up in the cloud. And basically what happens is the microcontroller pushes data into the MQTT server and then your smartphone talks to it and says, is there any data for me? And then please, please give me that data. Now I've got a whole much more in-depth video about MQTT with the Raspberry Pi and Arduino talking about subscribers and topics and all the things that you need to know to get that working. So if you're not familiar with MQTT, then I do highly recommend that video to bring you up to speed. So as I said, if you don't have a temperature sensor on your board, then uh, you're gonna need to add one. Now I've got uh, the Ground Studio Carbon V3, which is an ESP32 development board. And I do talk about that here in a video I've got on this channel. The advantage of the Ground Studio boards is they are manufactured here in Europe uh, and not in China. Uh, however, of course, the chip still comes from China because the Expressive Systems ESP32, of course, is a, is a Chinese chip. Now, a Ground Studio also sell a bunch of uh, different sensors, and one of them is the AH. T21 temperature sensor. In fact, it's a temperature and humidity sensor. And the point about it is, is that you can be connected very easily to the Ground Studio Carbon V3 using one of these quick or Stemma QT cables. Now, quick I squared C, that's where the IIC comes from. It is from SparkFun, Stemma QT is from Adafruit, but they're basically the same thing. It's a very simple plug here that plugs into these connectors here, and those are already wired up to the I squared C uh, part on the board. So without having to have a breadboard, without having to do any soldering, without having to do any fancy stuff, you can just connect a temperature sensor over this ribbon cable, and you've got it up and running. And that's what I'm going to use. Now for the MQTT part, I'm gonna use the Mosquito test server. So it's a publicly available Eclipse Mos uh, Mosquito MQTT server broker. You are free to use it for any application, but of course it's there for the community, so do not abuse it. And obviously don't rely on it for anything too important because it can get rebooted, it can disappear, it could be offline for a few hours. The server is provided as a service for the community to do, to do testing, but it's extremely useful for testing the Eclipse server on their part as well, which means they'll often be running unreleased or experimental code, and it may not be as stable as you want. So lots of caveats there, but from my experience, it's pretty good. You can just use this server, uh, and especially for like something like this, where you're sending this date, small amounts of data, this works really well. If you wanted something more serious, you'd have to make sure you got yourself uh, an MQTT server using some kind of paid plan to make sure it's always there with support and so on. Uh, that's up to you. Now on the smartphone side, of course, I'm using Android, but there are a whole plethora of different uh, kinds of apps that are able to create MQTT panels or dashboards. Now I'm using this one, the IoT MQTT panel. 
Uh, I'm not affiliated with this or guy at all. I don't have anything to do with this. It's just I've found this one and I've used it a lot and it works really well. And as you can see from the little screenshots here, you build up these little these panels, these little dashboards, and you can just kind of say, well, this is a temperature, this is humidity, this is something else, this is something else. And you can have graphs and everything and you can just build your own little dashboard inside of this app. And then it just shows you what that data is that you're sending. Uh, and it's available, there are other ones available and there are other ones available for iOS as well. But if you're using some kind of MQTT panel or dashboard app on your smartphone, then you are golden. Okay, so finally, a quick overview before we dive into the code. We've got a temperature and humidity sensor, which is talking over I squared C to a, a control, microcontroller board. We're gonna program this with uh, Arduino to push data up to test.mosquito.org, which is a free test server. And then we're gonna use some kind of MQTT panel or dashboard app on our smartphone to interrogate uh, the Mosquito server and get uh, our data out and then get it displayed in a nice temperature graph or whatever it is that we wanna do according to the panel software on here. Okay, so the next step now is to dive into the software, the Arduino code for this microcontroller. As I said, this is the ESP32, but it will work with just about anything that's supported by Arduino uh, and with a network connectivity. Okay, so here we are inside of the Arduino IDE. Now, because we'll be talking to an MQTT server, you need to have the Arduino MQTT client, which is an official Arduino library, uh, installed, and then you'll be able to get all that stuff about the protocol and how that works. It will automatically be there. You just need to say, send this message, and it will know how to send the message. So make sure that's installed. And then here in the actual code, first of all, you need to include the uh, Arduino MQTT client.h and Wi-Fi.h, because obviously you're sending things over the network up into the cloud. The next bit of code here is just to make sure that you've got your SSID and your password set up. And then here you need to actually define the Wi-Fi client and the MQTT client. You need to define the Wi-Fi client first because it is a parameter to the creation of the MQTT client. Then you can set up here some constants that we're going to use. So we know we're using test.mosquito.org. 1883 is the port number for MQTT. And I've got three topics defined here. These are just random numbers because obviously it's a public uh, server. So you'd have to pick something. You can't just pick you know, temperature because I'm sure that's already being used. So I've just picked some random digits here. And this first one will be a text log. And then these next two are, look the same, but in fact, one ends in T for temperature and one ends in H for humidity. So we're gonna end in sending things to three topics uh, in the end. Now in a moment, we're going to be initializing the AHT sensor that I showed you previously. So you're going to need to install the Adafruit AHT X0 library. And that again knows how to speak over I squared C to get the humidity and the temperature data out of that. So make sure you install that inside of the uh, library manager there. Then since that's now installed, we need to include the Adafruit AHT X0.h file. And then we need to create an AHT uh, object, which is uh, defined here uh, as that Adafruit thing. And we can access that now, like get the temperature, get the humidity through that object. The next little bit of code here is just to fiddle with the um, the NeoPixel that's built into this Carbon V3 board. So it's not just a simple red LED. We've got all the different colors there. And so this is the way you just access the NeoPixel code here on the, uh, on the Arduino. And the next two functions, in fact, color wipe, and wheel are just about colors to do with to do with the the RGB pixel. So, for example, this one you pass it in a number from zero to two five five, and it gives you a red, green, blue. So basically, you can cycle through a whole range of colors uh, by just giving it a value zero to two five five, and it kind of gives you the red, green, blue to divide up the whole spectrum in those three colors. So that's just color functions. Now we get down to the interesting stuff. Now we're here in setup. So the first thing we do is we just initialize the NeoPixel. So that uh, is done before the serial because if worst case scenario, you can you can turn on an LED and kind of do some debugging. So we start by initializing that. That's the same as a standard code for doing the NeoPixel. Then we initialize the serial as you would do 
often in any Arduino script. And then we say, okay, we're gonna to attempt to connect to the Wi-Fi, and uh, you use Wi-Fi begin. To do that, this is all standard code for the Arduino for doing uh, Wi-Fi, and then here it basically waits, printing out dots on the serial port until it is connected. Once it's connected, it prints out some information about the connection, including the IP address that has been assigned to the board. Then we look here to see if we can find the uh, AHT uh, a sensor and so you call this aht.begin remember we defined that object earlier on and if it can find it it finds it if it can't it goes into an infinite loop saying i'm sorry i couldn't find that uh, and uh, you can't do anything else after that check your connections check whatever but assuming it finds it and you're okay the final thing so we've connected to the wi-fi we've connected to the temperature sensor and now we actually need to connect to the mqtt server so we just print out that's what we're attempting to do it then attempts to run the connect here and then if that succeeds then it says you are connected to the mqtt server and then finally we change the color here red green red, green, blue, red, green here to show that actually everything's going well. So when the light go green and the light goes green, it means that everything has connected up absolutely fine. So once initialization has happened, so that's connecting to Wi-Fi, connecting to the sensor and connecting to MQTT, now we're ready to actually start doing some processing. Of course, that happens in the loop function. So the first thing we do is we try to find out the temperature and the humidity by calling AHD get event and the new part it gives returns the humidity and the temperature in these two variables and then we just print them out. So the first thing you want to make sure you can actually get the temperature and the humidity, print them out on the serial port and that happens every time the loop goes round. Now that we've got them we actually want to send three messages to three different topics to our MQTT server. The first one is going to be just to that normal topic, just topic, and that's going to be a text log. So basically you do begin message, an end message, and then you put some stuff in it. So it's MQTT client, print, print, and what am I doing? I'm just building up a message here that basically says temperature and humidity, just a text log. And then when you call end message, that is actually then sent up to the cloud. And then we do exactly the same thing now for just the temperature, but we're not doing it in text, we're actually sending the number. So you just do print here temp.temperature, and notice we're sending it to the topic with a T at the end, so it's slightly different to the one above, and that will just come into a topic on the MQTT server that's just sending the temperature. And then we do exactly the same thing for the humidity. So every time we go around the loop, we do three, uh, send three messages. We read the temperature and the humidity from the sensor, and then we send a text version, and then a version just with the temperature, and then a version just with the humidity. And then here at the end, we just do a little loop that cycles through all the different colors using that wheel and color wipe function. This parameter here is a delay. So when you do 255 by 235, it's roughly one minute. So this little loop here, which cycles through the colors, takes about one minute. And then we, of course, we loop back up to the top again, and we read the new temperature and the new humidity and send it all again. So this will just go around in a loop every minute, sending the temperature and the humidity. Now, maybe you think that's too frequently, maybe let's like do it every 10 minutes. You can do it however you want, but the important thing is it's being sent up to the MQTT server and you can connect now to the MQTT server from your Android smartphone. Okay, so here we are inside of the MQTT IoT panel software on Android. And basically, just to show you how it works, you can see it's already received some humidity data. Here's the text version that came through. So you can see that it's logged there and that's just the string that I send through from the, uh, from the uh, Arduino there, from the ESP32 development board. Now we're gonna add the temperature gauge just to show you how these kind of programs work. So you can add a new panel, you click down there, and you can scroll all the different types here, look progress bars and graphs and everything. We're gonna go with a gauge. And then we're gonna give it the topic. Now I've got the topic cut and paste already. Remember this is exactly the same as a topic that we found in our Arduino source code. It's got the T at the end, which, which means it's just receiving the temperature. You can give it a scale. So let's say hopefully it never gets down to zero inside my house. Outside would be different, but inside my house. Uh, and let's go with 40 degrees maximum that you might get in the summer. And that gives you a color range here. That's what basically that does. And so you can hit create. Okay, so there's the temperature. We can actually edit its position. So let's just move it up right to the very top there like that. Now we have to wait for the next, um, the next data to be pushed out from the Arduino, which should come very quickly. And then when we see it, that temperature gauge will move. And there you go. So we can see the new log 
messages come in there and we can see the temperature now 21.22 degrees and the gauge is showing that between our minimum and our maximum that we set also the humidity data was sent and you always you can you can change this however you want obviously you can send more stuff if you've got more sensors but here you've basically got a very quick way of monitoring the temperature in your house from your android smartphone Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.